Okay, so I'm just going to make this very short and simple tutorial or, or tips and tricks really. I have here Henry and I have a super long warp. This is a blanket warp and this is on my 48 inch rigid heddle loom and I use the extended length of our dining room table for the length of the blankets which is about 90 inches I think. So I need to obviously wind that onto the warping beam there, all of that, whilst keeping the tension. So here's my super trick I'm going to show you, and it involves tins of, I believe I've chosen, oh, sorry for the back camera, ravioli. Um, always keep a tin of ravioli in the cupboard for my husband, but that's another story. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to tie off the two ends like we would normally. So you have to move to the next video to see um, what we do next. Okay, so I've tied it and cut it. Now, it's a good point here. You can see straight away how much the elasticity of the yarn has pinged back the length of the warp, which is why you have to allow for quite a lot of wastage when calculating your warp length. Um, for those of you who have been or who've forgotten, um, you want to add at least 18 inches to your um, wanted finished length um, to allow for wastage. In fact, it's 18 inches plus about 5% of your overall length, um, but that's for another day. So anyway, they're cut. So now the super technical bit, tie your ends. Now, because I've got a super wide warp, I've actually chosen to warp onto two different warping pegs because otherwise the um, the length of the hypotenuse of the warp means that this side would be a lot longer than the middle, which, I mean, it's not a disaster, but it is a big waste of yarn. So I warp, I put my, my warping peg sort of either side of the table and then get to the middle of the loom and I swap from this side to this side, if that makes sense. Oh, I have my finger over the microphone then. You might be able to hear that. Oh, well. So I've now tied the warp around here. And what I'm going to do, I would do this normally with two hands. I'm going to pop those there. I would also normally, honestly, I need to unclamp the loom. And I'm just going to push this forward. And then I'm going to take your background here, if you're not already fast asleep by now. And you'll see that, amongst the dog, these are pretty good at keeping my tension for my winding. So now I'm going to go and do a bit of winding. So I'm attempting to do this single-handed, which isn't always the best idea, but I'm now going to start winding and you can see that I've still got the tension there and I'm getting a decent tension on this. Now at this point, let's just look at him, at this point you would normally put some cardboard slots in here to also help with the tension but I haven't got any long enough. Um, I need to cut some more. So, and then as you're winding it, you can just push your loom over more so that your tins are lower down and then you just keep winding basically. Um, and that's it. So just as a final um, share here, what I do when it gets to the point when I have to take the tins off, what I'm going to do, let me step back, is I'm gonna lean against this with my leg, put my body weight on there to tension it. I'm going to hold that one with my left hand and then I'm going to turn the um, the ratchet and wind it on. I'll see if I can prop up the phone somehow to show you this very inelegant way that I do it. So, so I shall sort of lean on that. I'm going to hold that, told you it wasn't very pretty, and now I'm, I'm going to wind this, and I'm getting brilliant tension in both. And then I've got 
Goodbye, done. Marvellous.